Hello boys and girls, how have you been? I hope you've been good. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for protecting us and being with us. I pray that you may speak to us and help us to worship you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's welcome the worship team. I can't stop singing, singing, singing about you. I can't stop shouting, whoa. Never gonna keep me quiet Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. We thank you for being with us. I pray that you may protect us as we learn your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I hope you learned something new today. Amen. Thank you, music team, for leading us so well in prayer 
and in worship. May the Lord greatly bless you. Children, good morning and how are you? Praise the Lord. I want to take this opportunity to welcome the first time listeners and viewers. You are so much welcome to our today's lesson. My name is Teacher Faith. I'm so excited and happy to be teaching you today. Now, children, can you remember what we learned last Sunday? In these past weeks, we have been having a series on God is calling us. And last Sunday, we learned that God is calling us to serve. Today, we have another lesson. And just before I share my today's lesson, I want to give you a short story about some little friends of mine. Amy, John, Musa, and Lydia were very good friends. They used to play together and actually they were neighbors. So they would just play outside their houses. So this particular day, Amy's mother was going to the market. And then she called Amy and asked her to take care of her little brother, Jack. Amy was eight years old while Jack was three years old. Now the mother went to the market, but before she went, she said, Amy, ensure you stay in the house with the baby until I come back. Then the mother left. And guess what? Just a few minutes after she left, Amy was out playing with her friends. Imagine she left little Jack in the house. Jack was so, so sad. He cried and cried and cried until he could not cry anymore. Soon, the mother came. When she came, Amy just remembered, but the mother found her just playing outside with the friends while Jack was so sad inside the house. The mother was so angry. Do you think Amy made the right choice. In our lesson today, we are looking at what God is calling us to do. God is calling us to do, to make the right choices. So boys and girls, did you come with your Bible, with your notebook and a pen? We are going to use this right away, even as we go through our story today. Now, what is it, what does it mean to make a choice? Like we saw Amy had the option of staying in the house to take care of the child, but she chose to go out to play with her friends. What is it to make a choice? What does it mean? Now, making a choice is selecting if, for instance, you are given two pencils, this is color red, color pink, and color blue. If you are given this and you are asked, which color do you, would you like? And then you choose blue. That is a, a choice. The other person can say, I like pink more. So they choose pink. So that is making a choice. Ah, so children, God is calling us to make the right choices. Like he's giving us a lot of opportunity. Wherever we are, we always are making choices. Sometimes, you know, you can be asked to do their assignment. Some people you choose to watch the TV instead of doing their assignments. Others, they choose to do many other things. In the Bible, we have people that made many choices. Some choices can be good while others are bad. So in this lesson today, we want to look at a man of God, Abraham. And we want to see he, what choices he made. In our Bible story, we will meet the man of God, Abraham. Now, Abraham 
was called by God to go to the land of Canaan. But before he left, he went with his wife, uh, Sarai, also called Sarah, and he was accompanied by his nephew, Lot. So, and he also took all the belongings, all the things that belonged to him, including the animals, the servants, and everything that he had. So I want us to read from verse 1 of uh, Genesis chapter 13, and we shall also read verse 13. So verse 1, So Abraham went up from Egypt to the Negev with his wife and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Abraham had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. Then verse 5 says, Now Lot, who was moving about with Abraham, also had flocks and herds and tents, but the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together. And quarreling or fighting arose between Abraham's herdsmen and Lot's. So now, when Lot went with Abraham, they started uh, at some point. We have seen in the word in the Bible that the land was not enough. And so they started fighting. Let us see the clip to see what happened. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Abraham. This is Abraham. Hey. When Abraham was younger, he was known as Abram. Oh. Abram lived in a place called Haran. One day, God told Abram, leave your home with your family and go to a place that I will show you. So Abram traveled with his wife Sarai, their nephew Lot, and the rest of their family. The new land that they made home was crowded. Abram said to Lot, Let's not fight. Is the whole land not before us? Hmm. Let's split up. You go one way, and I will go the other way. Aha. So Lot looked to the left and to the right. He saw that the land of Jordan was well taken care of, so Lot chose to go the way that looked better to him. He took his family and they settled in the beautiful land near the town of Sodom. Abram took his family and they moved the other way. Then one day, God said to Abram, Look up, all the land you see will be blessed. I will give it to you and your family forever. Abram received the promise and the blessing because he was faithful. Wow, did you see? Did you hear what happened? Yes, we have seen that, uh, what Abraham did. Because Lot's servants were fighting with his servants, Abraham did not want them to fight. Abraham was a peacemaker. So we can see that he chose not to fight with Lot. So some of the things that we learn from this is that Abraham, being so selfless, decided to ask Lot to choose a part of their land. In verse 9, we see that he asked uh, Lot, he told him, if you choose the right, I'll choose the left. If you choose the left, I'll choose the right. So Abraham was so selfless. He gave Lot the opportunity to choose. Now. Lot looked and looked at both sides, and behold, he saw that the east was looking very, very green, and he chose the side that looked very, very nice. Actually, he chose the plains and pitched his tent up at Sodom, 
Now, Sodom was a land with very wicked people, people that did not fear the Lord. But now Abraham just depended on God and he chose to remain in Canaan. That is the land where God had actually called him to go. And God visited Abraham and he promised to bless him. He promised to give him that land together with his descendants, all the land of Canaan. And he promised that Abraham will have so many descendants as the dust of the earth. So we can see that because he chose the right thing, God came in and blessed him. So children, what do we learn from this story? We learn that in the times uh, like in the times that we are living in, we need to be peacemakers like Abraham. We can depend on God. We cannot actually choose well if we do not depend on God. Abraham uh, had trust in God and he got the right part where God had actually asked him. When we see that, Lot used his sight. He saw a very nice place, but he went to a place that had wicked people. So we need to believe and trust in God, even to lead us to do the right things. Abraham was a peacemaker. He chose not to fight. He also chose to stop the fight between uh, Lord's servants and his servants. Now, Abraham also gave Lot opportunity to choose where to go. So we, there are times when we need to even give opportunity to the others. We don't need to fight with them over, like, for instance, our toys, things that we like. We need to teach them, to, to allow them to choose. So we can learn that from Abraham. And from our first story, the story that we had of Amy and the children. Now, Amy, we saw that she was asked by the mother to take care of the little brother, but she chose to go and play with the friends. That is what children, what do we call such a thing? That is disobedience. Amy disobeyed the mother. And now in our story today, God wants us to make the right choices. We cannot make the right choices if we do not depend on God. So God is asking us children to actually depend on him so that we can make the right choices. There are many things around us that we can choose from. For instance, I know most of you, I know like all of you are in school and many times you are given assignment by your teachers. Sometimes some people choose to just sit, play with their friends, and refuse to do the teacher's assignment. So, and is that right? Sometimes they feel like, ah, watching the TV, playing with friends, it's so cool, yeah? And so they fail to do their assignments. In this case, God is calling us to do the right thing. What do you do when you find your friends fighting or doing, uh, abusing others or stealing? What should we do? We need to make the right choices by even becoming peacemakers like Abraham. We can separate them. We can tell them that is not right. So God is actually calling us to make the right choices, to love others, to show kindness, and to be peacemakers. Even at times like now when there is elections in the country, people are fighting. People want to choose their leaders. But sometimes if they, they are not happy with the choices of others, sometimes they fight. So we need to tell those around us not to fight, but we need to be peacemakers. So that is my prayer today, that God will help us, that we shall learn to depend on God so as to make the right choices in life. If our parents, for example, they give us chores, they tell us to do things. We need to do the right thing. And 
As I have said, sometimes it is not easy to decide which choice to make. So we need to depend on God to help us make the right choices. So children, the first choice, the best choice that you can make, the first one is choosing to depend on God. And you can only do that if you have Christ in your life. So the first choice that you can make is to accept Christ to be your Savior and Lord. So if you are there, you have not made that choice, I want to pray with you. Pray after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for teaching me that I should make the right choice. I decide this day to choose you to be Lord and Savior of my life. Write my name in the book of life and forgive my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, if you have made that prayer, you are now a child of God. And I want to pray for everyone. Maybe you have given your life to Jesus, but you want to pray that God will help us to always make the right choices. So, all the children, can we close our eyes and pray? Heavenly Father, we are grateful, Lord, for teaching us that we should make the right choices. I pray for every boy and girl that is listening and watching this lesson, oh God, that you help them, dear Lord, to always make the right choices. Help our parents too, to guide us and also make the right choices whenever they are required to. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Now children, it's time for our memory verse, and it comes from Joshua 24, verse 15. Then choose for yourself this day whom you are going to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can you see it again, children? Then choose for yourself this day whom you are going to serve. But as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Amen. Now it is time for. Craft work. I want you guys to have, can have a piece of paper or a manila paper, whatever you can access. You can have a piece of paper like this one, A4, or a manila paper. Now, on that piece of paper, you shall fold it to make two sides like this. You can see it's like a, a book letter. Uh -huh. So on one side, at the top, you'll write good choices. And on the other side, you write bad choices. Now on the good side, the right, the left hand side, on the good choices, you will draw a smiley face. You know when you make good choices, you would smile. It brings happiness to you. So you write a smiley face on the, on the good, under the good choices. And then, what are the good choices that you want to make? You can list some of them. Like for myself, one of them that I want to write is, I want to give my life to Jesus. Then number two, I would like to obey to obey my parents, God's commands, and then to love the people around me and then become a peacemaker like Abraham. Now, what are the bad choices? The bad choices bring a lot of sadness. So on the bad choices, you draw a circle and write a, a, a sad face, someone that is frowning showing that that is a bad choice. People who make bad choices disobey, and they also fight. Some, they steal. Others, they refuse to do the teacher's homework. So you'll see what are the bad choices around you. But now God wants us to make the right 
choices. So, so that you can always have a smile. So now once you have written the choices, at the bottom you write our memory verse, which is Joshua 24, 11. Choose for yourself whom you are going to serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Once you have done that, children, we encourage you to share your craft work. You can share with your pastor, you can share with your teachers, and let us have it so that we can share with the rest of the children. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, God bless you so much. Amen. Uh -huh.